I want to talk about Kanye real quick. Yeah, you know, I know that's a touchy subject <laughs> to talk about Kanye these days. But I think there's some important things to be said. So we're not going to get into some of the Kanye conversation, but what I do want to talk about is this part of it right here. So I'm you know, read this article and it says, this is the craziest part. You know what? I, I, let's skip to this. He doesn't have the Adidas deal, right? Yeah. Anymore. And what? He lost Gap too, right? Yep. All right. So just days ago, the rapper, what? The rapper come fa- oh, rapper Who writes stuff like this? The rapper come fashion entrepreneur Kanye West <laughs> challenged Adidas to drop him following a week's long barrage of anti-Semitic remarks made on social media and in national media appearances. Right? Blah, 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 blah. Guess what? He gets dropped. Now, let's start with this headline. Billionaire no more. Kanye West's anti-Semiticism obliterates his net worth as Adidas cuts them ties. Now, it's a couple of different angles, but let's start here. The one main reason I wanted to like, even bring this up was because I saw... Nori did the interview, the Drink Champs interview with Kanye, right? Yeah. I did not see it. But Kanye said some wild stuff, apparently, because then Nori had to go on an apology to it, right? Yeah, and take it down. Ta- oh, see, I didn't know it was taken down. Yeah, he took it off the channel. Oh, and you can still find it on YouTube if you search hard enough. Knows, yeah, but like, no, nah, he took it off his channel, yeah. Oh, dang. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was even worse than I thought, <laughs> right? And, like, my thing is... Initially, you're just thinking, oh, yeah, Kanye said some wild stuff, right? You know, and it makes sense. It all makes business sense. But, like, oh, he said some wild stuff, and now he has to apologize for, like, put uh, having it on his platform. And people are like, oh, Nori got scared as if he was responding to the the media online. Not the media, the people in the comments. Everybody just hating on him. Talib, Kali, da, 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 like, just not hating on him, but, you know, just against what was said. So... I see that, but then Joe Budden, I actually saw a clip with him and it clicked for me because I had only been consuming that side of things but and I still hadn't watched the clip. But Joe Budden was speaking from an angle of, hey man, when things like that happen, like, it's like, Nori, them calls that you get, right? Uh, like this company, like your pod is in partnership with Revolt, Revolt's in partnership with this, was it? Mm-hmm. The, the, the sponsorships for your podcast. And I'm like, oh man money i did not think about nori losing money Mm -hmm. because of this all right or the potential to it was like ah yeah i can't i gotta apologize i can't have my people and my pockets (laughs) in failure mode at the same time right so because obviously the people were against them so it made me think about how today we're in a day where artists man like their awareness when it comes to partnerships and the things that they can say on platforms this is just a, literally a different time. You know what I mean? It's, 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 it's really different. But then, of course, you go back to Kanye West. And it's, it's crazy how fragile things like net worth are, right? And these things that we big up. And, and I didn't want to say it in the moment because, you know, people always kind of consume your hating or something. But I'm like, when he would be saying he has a higher net worth and he's richer than some people, I'm like, it's not the same type of Richard and so like mm-hmm. we're talking about paper and it's because of a big contract from Gap. Yeah. A big contract from Adidas. That's and a contract is different than, you know, my business is worth certain. Yeah, certain we amount, we saying right? firsthand those contracts are fragile. Contracts are fragile. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> he knows cause he done broke them. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's like, hey man, maybe these contracts outside of the music industry <laughs> they're a little bit weaker. You know, the, the music industries, boy, them things I ironclad, that stuff the labels do. But the that right there, it's like, dang, bro, you lost I mean, you're not a billionaire just from a couple moves. And I, you know, he gonna be straight, whatever, bro. You got you'll be all right. You know, there's plenty of people who gonna follow you no matter where you go. You know, yeah. uh, he's big enough to have sheep. <laughs> yeah. you know, every every, every uh, icon has sheep, but it's really interesting because he's gone this path of partnership after partnership after partnership, and you know now I don't know if you saw when he said uh, Sway was right or yeah. Sway had the answers. Yeah, I did see that. It's just like, huh. I was like, but that doesn't go in line with your whole, I don't listen to anybody who has less money than me either. All right. And like, and I, you know, and that, but we all fall 
for that too sometimes yeah. right where it's like oh you have to be ultra successful in this thing before i get any advice from you in this thing all right and i think there's truth to that but there's also a nuance because i remember talking to my trainer and i'm like do you think what how do you feel about only having trainers that are like really swole or in shape mm. and, and you can't be a good trainer without it he was like no nah, that's not true and this this is a very in shape guy, but he was like, there's a lot of people who are just good for themselves, but they don't know how to actually train somebody else. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That's a completely different dynamic. It's a completely different skill. Cause one, everybody's body is in your body. And then your pain threshold or what you're willing to do. Yeah, people a, got different goals. It's a completely different goals. Yeah. All that stuff is different. And it made me think about but you honestly us, right? As a marketer, right? Like we see 5011 situations, all right? All these different types of artists, different types of genres, bad artists, while they're bad and helping helping them as they become better, all right? Um, in their own development. Yeah. Artists who are already popping at a certain level, helping with certain things. We've seen so much. And sometimes I've seen some artists have their singular success for them. And it could be great, like a great level of success, not even like fronting on it. But then think, their path applies to the rest of the world. Yeah. And other artists will buy into that. Oh, I'm going to listen to him because he did this. But it's like, yeah, but he, you're not him. Yeah. You don't have his charisma. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or you don't have his work ethic. Or yeah. you don't have the ability to mix master like Russ. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like there's, there's so many different situations. And I think sometimes artists, rightly so, pay attention to successful artists, right? There's an allure to it, but just because they swole don't mean that they can help you get swole. Right? Yeah, and I mean, and going back to the the different goal thing, it's like sometimes if this person is so far ahead of you, they don't even, they can't even remember how to relate to where you are in your exactly. position, right? It's like it's like if you're an artist that just started making music today, like the worst person to ask for advice on how to blow would probably be Drake. Drake, you know what I'm saying? It's been 10, 15 years since he was an underground right. artist. He don't know what to tell you. Hey man, I don't Climate know, man. Call your label and tell them to put up a marketing budget. That's what you need to do, bro. You're like, what? You know what I'm saying? But then it's like, there might be this artist who maybe is not as massively successful, but is four or five steps ahead of you. And he, he or she can more closely remember like where they mm -hmm. were in your position and give you good advice that can right. help you get to where they're at. Like, like, yeah, I might not be able to take you to a 10, but I can get you from a one to a four. You know what I'm saying? Once you get to four, you in the game, you can start figuring out yourself, make your own path, all that stuff, you know? Yep. And I don't know, man, I just always go back to the gold things. I, I remember thinking about like um, like the mastermind thing we did, and, you know, the Sam Sam talking about how like, you know, like I don't want this, you know what I'm saying, 100 or whatever super massive business. Like some of the people I've coached, you know what I'm saying? Like he's, he's proven it, like, bro, there are, people, oh, yeah. there are people I put in the world that make 10, 20 times what I make because that's what they want, that's not what I want. So it's like it could be easy for us to go like, oh man, you ain't making thirty million a year. Well, I'm gonna listen to you. It's like, well, I have the ability to do. It. I just don't want to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I got I got different goals and a lot of artists following that, bro. Like so many artists are like, yo, you might say like, man, you're not number one on Billboard. You know what I'm saying? You're not. You didn't have a top, a number one album. Why would I listen to you? And it's like, man, I could do it. You know what I'm saying? I have the resources to possibly do it. I just that's not what I want. I don't want to have to play that same game that those artists have to play. But then the small artists looking like, you don't know what the fuck you talking about. It's like, no. Nah. Yep. Got different agendas. Yeah. Got different goals. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. And I took a left where you might have wanted to take a right, but that yeah. that left was good for me. And there's just some personalities where it's like they're just not good for the teaching. Right? Yeah. Like a lot of artists, like, they want to pay attention to themselves. They need to pay attention to themselves. So it's hard to give true attention sometimes they don't to, know. to that other product. And they don't know. Yeah. Sometimes, some, well, some of them, especially from, from a more label era. Yeah. Right? It's like it was so much going on around you that had nothing to do with you. Right. It was for you, but it had nothing to do with you. Right. In terms of you didn't weren't involved in the process. Little things. And then we know a lot of artist manager relationships where like managers are protecting, right, from hearing certain things. Yeah. And, and certain lines of communications and things. So artists are receiving filtered information. And that's not even to their fault sometimes because sometimes people are doing it because they, you know, think that's what the artist needs. And then, of course, there's people doing it maliciously, but like there's some who are just like, nah, it's better for the artist and their emotion and keeping them in their emotional state. So you have to be a pretty even headed person yeah. when you get information for them to continue to do that. Otherwise, you're like, ah, it's probably best I don't overwhelm them or, yeah. or offend them. Blow the whole spot up. Yeah, blow yeah. the whole spot up. That's <laughs> next thing you know, they can't perform for the show in three hours, yeah. right? Yeah. So, like, it all makes sense. But, and you know, Sam is different too, because, you know, 
It's like Sam, I'm like I don't want to make my more any more money than this this way. It's like yeah, I went to thirty five million a year. I decided to go down to six million over here, but I'm building this like future billion dollar company. Over yeah. Here. <laughs> so, yeah. So it's like it's, it's a different. But I'm not yeah. But you can look at oh, you're not making this amount of money this way anymore over here. Yeah, cool. But again, like you said, I applied it to how I wanted to. I, mm-hmm. His, his life seems so relaxed. You know exactly, I mean? bro. Exactly, bro. Like <laughs> well, he got like a four person team, five person team, or something, bro. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we get to this from Kanye West, but like to even bring that like back full circle, you know, I think like Kanye is in this really interesting spot right now, where I think many of the people who are still Acting as if everything he's he like he never does anything or says anything questionable, right? Mm-hmm. There's still there's still some of those people left, but uh, many of those people, especially the ones who are artists, still don't recognize how unique his scenario is. You can't follow that path. Yeah, it's just like, and I know you're inspired by it because <laughs> like, look at him doing X, Y, and Z. But I, I it's cool to also see, hey, there's some consequences. Because I think people have only seen the allure to it and don't understand what it what it comes with on the other side of it at, at the same time. If, you, if you're if you about that life for real, for real, of I'm going to just say and do whatever I want to. Like yeah. Kanye has been, bro, he's so intelligent with his positioning. Because to me, bro, and maybe because, you know, I, I market, but I see him as a marketer first damn near. Yeah. And, like, I, he would hate to hear that. Oh, I don't like marketing. You know him and Travis, bro. They say the same bullshit. Oh, I don't like marketing, but y'all market. Y'all that's all you the do. Best marketing motherfuckers I ever seen. But that's one of the best things to say. Hey, I don't market, bro. Shit just happens. Yeah, it just happens. And so you feel like it's all from this great inspired place, no intentional planning. But the shit is so specific and detailed. It's, it's no way that this is not planned. Yeah. The, the, everybody's called out your <laughs> your formula. Oh, album coming out, and the, you're starting to do X, Y, and Z type of things. That's pretty clear. You're not doing it for no reason. Yeah. Right? So there's a formula that's always been there. And to be pop, right? Kanye compares himself to Michael first, like Michael Jackson. And now he compares himself to whoever's big at the time, right? Yeah. Bad Bunny, I think you were the one who told me about that. Somebody told me he compared himself to Bad Bunny. Oh, no, I want me yeah. I hear about that. That's it's crazy. Like, hey, whoever's hot, the hottest person <laughs> in your mind right now, I'm them. <laughs> It was, it, was, it was That's such a wild comparison. Bro, because whoever's the top, <laughs> whoever's at the top, bro, I want to be right there with him. Steve Jobs, Bad Bunny, Elon Musk, like whatever, right? Um, <laughs> That's such a crazy comparison. Uh, but <laughs> that made me lose my thought. But <laughs> hold on, where was I? Damn it. Um, great marketer. Oh, great yeah. marketer, right? Yeah. And one of the best. So if you want to be pop, right, the best pop, and Michael Jackson, he was such a genius marketer. Yeah. And he doesn't get credit enough for it. And, like, their ability to, one, take things from other places, because Kanye West, like, forever has just been, like, hey, I'm going to take it from some other place and then be the one who gets clout for it by introducing it, right? It's not that he doesn't bring any innovation, right? But he's not necessarily an inventor, right? He's not necessarily the craftsman in area, every area that he gets credit in right yeah which is fine right he's a producer right a ep in many ways yeah right yeah um but that was what steve Jobs said like he had that quote right i don't play an instrument i play the orchestra like when the code is ass that's the yeah it's a cold ass quote like, yeah bro, that's, that's a bar <laughs> <laughs> if you look at michael jackson bro you look at all the stuff he did like it's literally the playbook for decades to come that people didn't even get a chance to truly capitalize on and start capitalizing on until like now. Yeah, because social, they didn't have social, they, they couldn't spread. You really look crazy because it's like, what are you doing this for? You look crazy. Yeah. <laughs> and so the understanding aesthetically of branding, right? Yeah. We know the glove, we know the hat, we know the de- like the postures that he would do with certain dance moves, kick up the leg. There's so many single parts of his brand that you know would be Michael Jackson. You want to talk about a Halloween costume, right? And just, or someone, it could be a swole dude that looks nothing like him. You know what I mean? You got the hat on, you know. Got the hat on, you know. <laughs> got a glove on, you know. Yeah. He just does a kick, you yeah. know. Does does this, you know. Yeah. Does a thriller move, and you know, right? And then 
collaboration. He's done this in multiple videos, but the one that like I think is most known and clearest to see it was some other video. It's ridiculous, so I don't even know the name of the song. But the remember the time, the one where they were in uh not Miami, though <laughs> he was a mummy, right? When they, they were in Egypt, that's what it was. They were yeah. in Egypt. There's the king and the queen, and like he comes up to pre, uh, perform for the king and the queen, and he tries the king by like flirting with his girl, basically. Yeah, you know what I mean. They turn into some dust and disappear, so they can't they can't get him right. In that video, you got Magic Johnson. You got so many different people. I think Arsenio Hall's in that one. But he has like person after person after person, type of people that were not anywhere near that industry. So many collaborations. The We Are the World collaboration. Like uh, now, social media era, people are like truly understanding the impact of collaboration. He was doing it where it was like solo. Yeah. If you, if you look at the references, there's not many people in that era that you see that collaborate to that level on that scale like pulling people from all these different spaces and places that to collaborate in. so it's just it's, it's, it's really interesting to see like I mean he was like studying clothing in Japan and then integrating it into his like suit and, like little bands like all these little things like the moonwalk wasn't his dance he took it and introduce it on a pop scale. Wait, for real? Yeah. I didn't know that. No, that's not him, bro. Oh, man. He's not the, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Yeah, man. Like, genius marketer, bro. He's a marketer. Like, he's a true artist, too. Producer. Like, you know, they would say great artist still. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like what kind of be doing all the time, he will take it. Maybe, in some many cases, improve it, to you know, to be fair. But present it in a, on, a, on a larger scale. In a, in a great fashion and get it going. And that's what pop is. I feel like, you know, they, they call Michael Jackson the king of pop. I don't know how much pop existed before Michael. I feel like from my reference point and like, you know, young person study of history without like reading a scholarly article on, 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 on history of pop, Michael Jackson seems like he almost like invented Mm. or validated <laughs> validated pop and made it a, a, a legit genre oh man I, I know saying. where you was going with that hey, no, 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 <laughs> I, hey, I don't know where you thought I was going but no he feel like he made it almost like a legitimate genre to continue to chase and just like in basketball they're always chasing Michael Jordan and trying to find a next him because of the marketability the success of it all that stuff in the marketing machine that it is from a capitalism standpoint People were chasing, oh, shoot, we need another pop star, pop star, pop star, because he Michael was taking rock and R&B and all these things. And okay, yeah. Like, okay. Okay. That was, they were calling <laughs> him the king of pop for a reason. When back then, I mean, I feel like now it's more, there's a, it's more generic and. People don't care as much. People don't, I want to say uh, care as much. Like there's a, a almost a negative stigma on pop now. And I'm sure there are people in those individual genres that probably were against Michael, right? And sometimes, like, if it was, like, your genre that you care about, like, everybody else love it, but, man, that's not real rock or that's not real whatever. Yeah. I'm sure there were some of those people that existed. But the reality is, you know, pop was legitimately, by definition at the moment, popular music, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's like, how can you, how can pop be anything bad if it's, ju if it's, like, just popular? And popular is because a lot of people like it, Right. But now there's a formula for pop, right? And it became as like a true genre, which then, you know, now it has a stigma. It feels generic. It's less sold to it, yeah. wherever you're coming from. But no, anyway, man, like Michael, I, we could do a, I could do a whole like <laughs> breakdown, bro. Like that dude, marketing wise, the shit that he was doing, like. Yeah, bro, I'm still fucked up about the moonwalk thing. That's crazy. You, you didn't, man. I really didn't know that, did bro. Know, I did not know he, that. He, he, man, he did not, dog. <laughs> he really did not, bro. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. That's funny. Yeah, I remember when he found out when I found out I had to I had to cope a little bit. I'm like, dang, that's that's crazy. By the way, fun fact for y'all, you know, Michael Jackson did the moonwalk in Pasadena for the first time. You know, uh, oh, shout yeah. out to Urkel. <laughs> yeah. We did just learned up. Yeah, Urkel got all the facts, bro, about <laughs> things that happened in Pasadena. <laughs> 